I've always found the Command Tab experience to be one of the more awkward parts of using a Mac. Unlike Windows, you don't get a preview of the app that you're switching to, and you also can't see the individual windows open within the app. And in fact, when you use Command Tab, it doesn't even maximize any windows that were previously minimized. So if you've minimized a bunch of windows and then switched to that app, nothing actually happens. So enter TabTab. TabTab is a really small app made by, as far as I can tell, a solo independent developer that aims to fix some of these window management issues. So once installed, you can activate it using Command Tab just as before. And instead of getting the default Mac OS experience, you get TabTab -tab Launch instead. I've used this app for a couple of weeks now, enough to get a sense of it in day-to-day -day use. So let's first go through some of the things I like, and then I'll end with the things that I dislike about this app. So the first thing I really like is just how simple and unobtrusive this app is. You install it and it doesn't get in your way. It just replaces the default experience with something slightly better. The other thing I like is how configurable it is. When you first install it, you don't really have to change anything, but if you like to, you can go into the settings menu and you can configure a whole bunch of things, including where it shows up on the screen. So by default, it shows up on the left edge of the screen and you can even choose to activate this using the mouse. So when you drag your mouse to the left corner of the screen, that's when tab tab comes up. But you can also just move it to the center of the screen, just like the usual command tab experience, which is how I used it for a while. And then you can also move it, of course, to the right hand of the screen if you really want to. You can customize it per app. So you can remove some apps from tab tab altogether. If there's an app that you never want to switch to using command tab, then you can just go to settings, find the app and click ignore app so it never shows up on tab tab. You can also change the hotkey if you want tab tab to appear when you press say alt tab instead of command tab, you can do that. Another feature I really liked is the ability to search through your tabs. And you can do this without really lifting your fingers from the keyboard. When you press enter, you can see that the search box activates and you can just type either the title of the app or the window that's currently open and it will bring up that particular tab. But I have to say, I did find the key combination a little bit awkward to use. You have to press Command Tab first, and then without lifting your hands, you have to press Enter, and then you lift your hands off from Command Tab, and then you type your search query. So that is a little bit difficult to get used to and develop into a habit. If you like though, you can configure a dedicated hotkey just to go straight to the search experience. This in conjunction with the default hotkey might be the best way to use this app. The first minor thing I dislike is when I first installed it, it would sometimes fail to activate when I was pressing the shortcut really quickly. It seems to be slightly slower than the default Mac OS experience, and sometimes if you press Command Tab really quickly, nothing happens at all. However, I have to say, I recently upgraded to the latest version of this, and it seems to have fixed the issue. The only criticism I have left here then is that it is still very slightly slower to show up than the default Command Tab menu. And the second thing I dislike, which is the deal breaker for me, and may not be for you, is the price. Yes, this is a free app if you want to use it that way. The problem with the free app is the limitation of five recent apps that you can switch to. And day to day, I just don't find that to be enough. I'm regularly working across six, seven, maybe 10 apps. I might have a web browser, calendar, Slack, Notion, Terminal, a code editor. Already my working setup contains way more than five apps. Of course, people have to make a living. And as I said, this is developed by a solo developer. So if you want to support an independent creator, then maybe the $24 is an acceptable price to pay. But in my opinion, the value offered by this app is just not quite enough for that price point. I would happily pay probably five, maybe maximum $10 as a lifetime price, especially as the license is only valid for two Macs. Okay, so now that I've taken you through my likes and dislikes of this app, you might be able to guess my conclusion. I really think this is a great app. It's been well built. I think it's a good replacement for the default Mac experience. But if $24 doesn't mean much to you, or if you're just completely fed up with the default command tab experience on Mac OS, then probably this app is worth it. I'll link the app and the creator in the comments below in case you want to download and try it out for yourself. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed watching it, please do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this in the future about Mac apps, productivity, software, and AI. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.